The ball's velocity, acceleration and even its position can be represented as vectors, which makes it easier to make calculations on them. And that's why I'm going to create a vector class and a few methods to implement vector operations. In the world of physics, a vector is a line segment with a direction, which is represented by an arrow and defined by the direction it's pointing towards and its length, which is also called magnitude. And that means that if I have another vector starting in another position, but it has the same direction and the same magnitude, then these two vectors are identical. If this is vector A and this is vector B, then I can write that A equals B. And now in the two-dimensional space, a vector can also be defined by a pair of numbers. If I have the 1, 2 vector, that means that if I take this arrow and I make it start at the origin of the coordinate system, then it will point to the 1, 2 coordinate point. And an example of using the vectors in the case of the moving ball is I have the ball in the first frame in the 1, 2 position, which can be represented by the position vector. And in the next frame, the ball is in the 5, 5 position. That's also a position vector. And then the change of the ball's position, which is here the green arrow, is the velocity vector. So first, let's see if I have the first position vector and the velocity vector and I want to see what is the second position of the ball then what I do I just add those two vectors together and the way I'm doing that is adding the x components together and then the y components together like the x component of the first position vector is 1 and the x component of the velocity vector is 4 so 1 plus 4 will be the x coordinate of the second position vector and 2 plus 3 which is also 5 will be the y position of the second position vector and yeah that's exactly where the ball is in the second frame so this is how I add the vectors together and there is another way to look at this I have the first position and the second position and the velocity vector shows the difference between these two positions so to take the difference between the, these two positions, I'm subtracting the first position from the second position. And it works in a similar way. I subtract the x components and the y components, which will be 5 minus 1 in the x and 5 minus 2 in the y case. And the result will be 4, 3. And if I take this velocity vector and make it start at the origin, then I see that it is pointing to the 4, 3 coordinate points. So this is how I subtract two vectors from each other. And there is another picture to summarize <laughs> these two operations. If I have vector A and vector B, then if I want to have the A plus B vector, then I put the start of the B vector to the end of the A vector. And then the A plus B vector will point from the start of the A vector to the end of the B vector. And here's the subtraction. If I have two vectors A and B, then I make them start in the same position. And then the A minus B vector will point to the end of the A vector from the end of the B vector. Now the reason I'm talking about this so much is that I'm going to implement the vector operations in my code. So I go here and I create first a vector class and the constructor will take two arguments x and y and I want to start with the add method which will take a vector as an argument and it will return with a new vector where the x and the y coordinates will be the sum of the x and the sum of the y coordinates of the current and the argument vectors. And the subtraction will work almost the same way. 
except that it will get the difference between the x and between the y coordinates of the two vectors. Now if I go back to the visual demonstration, then here, the if I want to know how fast the ball is moving, that what I want to know is the magnitude of the velocity vector. I know the ball's position in the first frame and in the second frame, which means I can calculate the difference between the positions along the x and along the y axis. And once I'm done that, I can just use the Pythagorean theorem, because this is a right angle triangle, so I can use the this formula here. And as a result, I will get the that the magnitude of the velocity vector is 5. So let's implement this magnitude method. I will call it mag. It won't take any argument and it will return with the square root of the sum of the x square and the y square. This two star here that's called exponentiation operator that's how I can count the square of a number in ES6. Another basic vector operation is the multiplication which means that I multiply the magnitude of the vector by a number but it will still point in the same direction or if I multiply it by a negative number then it will point to the opposite direction. So the way I'm doing that is I have this 2 1 vector here and if I want to multiply the vector by 2, then I multiply both of its components by 2, which in this case will result a 4, 2 vector. And it works the same way. If I multiply it by a negative number, then the result will be the minus 4, minus 2 vector, which points in the opposite direction. And I can also multiply it by a number which is less than 1, then the magnitude will be less. And I want to implement this method in the vector class as well. I will call it mult and it will take an argument and it will return with a vector that has its components multiplied by the argument. And by the way it's constructor. Yeah. That's what I did at the end of the last episode where I wanted to make this acceleration and velocity more visible. I multiplied the acceleration components by 100 and the velocity components by 10. And speaking of the velocity and the acceleration, it's about time to turn them into vectors in the code. So first I want to check if it still works as it's supposed to be working and I think it looks pretty much like it did at the end of the previous episode. So I can go down to the ball class and instead of these property pairs I can introduce one vector for the velocity and one for the acceleration. They will both start with the 0, 0 value pair. And now here below instead of giving values to properties, I'm handling these as vector components. And this is the part where I'm giving new value to the velocity vector and here I can use the operations that I implemented. Here in the first line I add the acceleration vector to the velocity vector to get the new values of the velocity vector and in the next line I'm using the multiplication I multiply the velocity vector by the value of the 1 minus friction and here in the last two lines I'm just giving new values to the ball's position based on the velocity vectors x and y components and if I go back to the canvas, the ball is moving the same way as it did before, but I can't see the red, not red, green and blue lines anymore. 
that should be happening in the display method but instead of running these lines here I want to create a method in the vector class that displays the vector with a specific length and color and I will call this method draw vec. It will take four arguments. The first two will be the starting coordinates of the drawing. The third one will be a number that will be responsible for the multiplication and I also want the color to be a variable so that I can change it as well. And here I just rewrite the variables It will start to draw a line in the start x, start y position and then it will draw the vector multiplied by a number which will be another argument and in a color which I can change as well. And if I want to use that then I go back to the display method and I will take the current balls velocity vector and I call it draw vec method and the starting point will be the current balls x and y position the multiplier will be 10 because it worked well last time and I set the color to green and I copy this and I do almost the same but I use the acceleration vector multiply it by 100 and the color will be blue and if everything works fine then it will look exactly okay I swap the blue and the green colors but other than that it seems to be working the same way and I think this is enough content for one episode I introduced the basic vector operators and started to use vectors in my code and also wrote a method that displays the acceleration and velocity vectors of the canvas. But still in the next episode, I will keep working with the vectors.